and we are live what is up everybody decided to do another live stream today for today's game against the um houston rockets the pistons take another l and let me actually put the stats on the screen so you guys can see that um 116 to 107 um pistons take another l and in this game you know we battled for the most part for the first three quarters i would say um we were going at it especially you know coming into that third quarter outside of halftime usually that's when the pistons you know give up the game but um, tonight they kept fighting and fighting and coming out of that third quarter they came out with a lot of energy but heading into that fourth quarter just too many turnovers man a lot of guys off the bench our bench mile tonight just wasn't there for us um trey Lyles, josh jackson when they got in you know they didn't really do too much for us um offensively i would say and it was just a rough night for our bench mob and then especially without having him and diallo it's really really hard for our bench to have a lot of energy so um pistons take an l tonight i took a lot of notes and I'm basically going to give you guys my my most important notes. And then afterwards, I'm going to get into the comments. So um, the first thing that I will say is that the Houston Rockets, they came out tonight with a lot of energy, man. Um, That team over there, ever since Jalen Green has went down, they have just, <laughs> I don't know what I just said. They have just been on it ever since Jalen Green has went down. So a lot of energy for the Houston Rockets tonight. They came out the gate ready to go. So, you know, give props to them there. Um, the, the Rockets, they play physical and they make a lot of shots. And they're also really confident. So the Houston Rockets tonight, I got to give them their props. They play really, really well, you know, coming out the gate. Um, my next note is that Kay Cunningham tonight and, and in the previous game against the Indiana Pacers, you know, Kay Cunningham, I wouldn't say that he's playing passive right now because that's not the word that I would use. But the way he's playing basketball at this current moment in time, it's like more patient, I guess I would say. Um, I don't know how to particularly describe it in words because it's like he's not really looking to score right now but at the same time he does get his buckets when he needs to you know what i'm saying that's that's really the way that k cunningham is playing right now he isn't really being necessarily you know really aggressive out there if you look at the screen 11 assists tonight for k cunningham so you know he's it's not like he's being passive but he's not really being aggressive either he's like in the middle of it so um that's a note that i took down and you can obviously see that in the patriots game as well K just isn't really, you know, attacking and going at it right now, which is fine. I don't have any issues with that. I'm just, you know, making a point to say that K Cunningham right now is not being the most aggressive player as he's been in previous games. Um, another note that I took, let me see. Um, Isaiah Stewart versus Christian Wood. That was a good battle tonight. Um, Isaiah Stewart, he used his strength tonight to body um, Christian Wood. And I would say that, um, obviously, Rock, the Rockets won and Christian Wood, I think he had more points in the end, but... I would say that Stu held his own against um, Christian Wood tonight. So um, that was a note that I took. What else did I take? Um, I saw Ryan Hollins in the arena. If anybody knows who that is, he's a um, a former ESPN reporter. He might he may still be working for them. I don't know. But um, Ryan Hollins, I saw him in the building tonight. Um, let me see. The pick and roll with Isaiah Stewart, we didn't use it much. But on the few plays that we did use the pick and roll, it was effective. So that was cool to see. Um, Rodney Magruder got in late in the first quarter. Trey Lyles, they got in late in the first quarter. Um, Saban Lee checked in as well. Um, no, Not much of Josh Jackson tonight, which is kind of um, unfortunate seeing Magruder get in a lot. And then, um, let me see, turnovers. That was the main thing. And those were basically all of the notes tonight. Um, and I'm going to get into the comments and talk more about the game. So the first <laughs> the first thing that I see is should have drafted Jalen. Um, Jalen is injured right now. And I am curious to see, you know, what type of impact it will have on the Rockets once he comes back, since they've been playing so well recent, um, in recent games, you look at their record right now, 10 and 20. And since Jalen Green has went down, they've been playing really, really well. So, oh. Hi, remember me? I'm the Bias Rockets fan. Um, yes, I do. What's up, my guy? And actually, before I get more into the comments, let me take my face off the screen. And let's just look at these stats, man. So um, tonight, Isaiah Stewart, 20 minutes. Eight rebounds, one assist, and 16 points. So, as I said, you know, the battle between him and Christian Wood, it was prevalent tonight, and I would say that he held his own, definitely. Um, Sadiq Bey, the title of this live stream, Sadiq Bey is back. He has been killing it, man, in these past two, um, past two games, and I'm loving the fact that he's just looking more comfortable, more confident out there. His shots are starting, um, starting to fall. He's starting to score the ball inside and be aggressive when he attacks the hole. I'm really, really liking – what I've seen in these past two games out of Sadiq Bay. So I'm really, really happy to see that because he was going through one of the worst sophomore slumps I've ever seen before. So 
Um, it was really, really cool to see um, Sadiq Bay with that. 21 points tonight with Kay Cunningham, 11 assists. Already talked about him. Um, Killian Hayes tonight had a good ball game defensively. It don't, the stats don't show right here, but he had a few steals as well. So um, a decent game out of Killian Hayes. Um, Diallo, eight points. Frank Jackson, Saban Lee. Luca Garza, um, as you guys can see right there, nine points out of Luca Garza in that fourth quarter. He hit a few post um, hooks. He hit a three-pointer. Um, it was really, really cool to see Luca Garza, you know, get in tonight and play. So um, those were all of the stats. And let me get back into these comments and see what y'all talking about. Um, what up, though, Joe? What's up, D. Reese? Um, Cade is injured, or at least he was. Oh, yeah, it kind of scared me for a little bit. Um, Cade Cunningham, he went out, I think it was in the third or it was the fourth quarter, I forget. But um, he went down with, like, this foot injury, I guess. I don't know. I hope it's nothing serious. He got back in the game and he was playing well and he looked fine. So I'm hoping that it's nothing long term, but um, we shall see probably tomorrow. They'll probably come out with the report saying if it's something long term or if he's healthy or not. Sadiq is here at least. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really good to see Sadiq Bay in these past two games, you know, against the Pacers and tonight against the Rockets really find himself and look more comfortable out there. We haven't been on it because Green got injured. We have been on it because I never said that you <laughs> um, miss her. I said you've been on it since Jalen Green has got injured, which means that since you guys, since he's been out of the lineup, you guys have been playing well. Um, Garza looks good. Yeah. Um, Luca Garza tonight got in in that fourth quarter in a few amount of minutes, but he's been productive. And that's been the whole story with him so far um, this season, you know, with Luca Garza. Um, he hasn't got much playing time, obviously, on the main roster. He's gotten a lot of playing time in the G League. But when he does get in, in these few minutes that he does get in, he's usually pretty productive, which is good to see. So um, Luca Garza tonight, um, I, I don't know if we'll see much more of him in the future. Um, as you can see, Trey Lyles had 19 minutes. So I don't know if that's something that Casey is going to decide whether or not he's going to give Garza more minutes. But in the few minutes that he does get in, it is good to see you know the production out of him. Ooh, excuse me. Um, Ryan Hollins now works with the Rockets. No wonder he was hating on Giannis. Yeah, it's it's really funny to see, you know, someone like Ryan Hollins or uh, Paul Pierce or just any former ESPN reporter, just seeing them on the sidelines at games. It's always funny to see. Um, I'm trying to get my my head on the screen. What the heck? Um, what's up, Joe Polo? Makes my head hurt to watch these games. Um, we were not prepared to lose Kelly. Can't wait to get him back. Um, Jeremy, also, unless they trade him. Um, yeah, you know, losing Kelly Olenek and Grant, and then not just those guys, but Kay Cunningham missed basically the first month of basketball. Um, Killian Hayes, he missed five games due to that thumb injury. You know, injuries have really hurt us this season, so um, I, I really do hope that we can get Kelly Olenek back soon, and uh, I think we will because it's been like a month, or it's, it feels like it's been a whole, like, two, three months um, since we haven't had Kelly Olenek, so I'm looking forward to getting him back soon. And then as far as Grant goes, um, I saw that he had successful surgery um, two days ago, which is cool and, and really good for him. But it doesn't <laughs> appear that he will be in a plan for the Pistons in a long while. And then also I've seen a lot of trade rumors for him as well. So um, I, I, I wish we could get both of those guys back soon because the Pistons badly need them. But as of right now, you know, we just got to wait and sit this thing out. Um, did the Pistons win? No. Let me put this stats back on the screen. Um, 116 to 107 Pistons lose to the Houston Rockets. And actually, let's go through the Rockets stats a little bit. Uh, Christian Wood, um, 30 minutes, eight rebounds, two assists, and 21 points. Garrison Matthews, 16 points. Um, Josh Christopher, 10 points. Sangoon, but obviously no Jalen Green because of the injury. Um, no KPJ for the Rockets tonight. Mm, Got to give Luka more playing time. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. I don't think that Casey's going to do it because he tends to go with veterans like Trey Lyles ahead of him, but... We shall see. I wanted y'all to win. <laughs> I was rooting um, for the Pistons all game. I wanted the Rockets to tank. Our chances of getting Banchero or Chet are increasing, but y'all's are increasing. I appreciate that since you're a Rockets fan. I'm wishing that the Pistons won, but um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's really really bad here in Detroit right now um, with the with the way we've been playing recently. But it is what it is. We just got to push through this, man. Um, the Pistons lost. Yep. K needs to be the shooting guard. Um, I mean, I, I wish that they would live back up to their word when they were talking about the whole, 
you know, 1A, 1B type of thing before the season started. They said that we would see more of a combination between Killian Hayes and Kay Cunningham. But throughout this season so far, you know, when Kay first came back, they gave Killian Hayes the ball more and let him be the point guard more. But and and ever since Kay has kind of taken off and really, you know, began to score the basketball consistently, they've let Kay Cunningham be the point guard full time for the most part, which is, you know, I it's like in the future, he's probably going to be the point guard long term. But as of right now, you know, with his turnover issues, I just don't know if it's really good for him to necessarily be the point guard on every single play because for the majority of the game, it felt like Kay Cunningham was the um, point guard. When will Kelly come back? Um, it's been like a month or two months since Kelly Olenek has been injured. So um, we don't know a, a specific timetable for him right now, but it should be a pretty short time, I would assume, um, until he comes back. So um, I really like Kay. I'm willing to team – wait. I'm willing to team up with Pistons fans to prove that Green and Jalen are better than Scotty Barnes or will be better than him. Um, Houston was really hacking. They were getting the bulk of the calls. Hot take, but I like the flow of the office more when it's in Killian's hands. I don't think that's a, a hot take at all. I mean, Killian Hayes, with him being, you know, such a pass first point guard and with him, actually, let me put the stats back on the screen. I think he had 11. I mean, not 11. That was Kay Cunningham. He had 11 assists tonight, but... um. Let me pull it up. Um, Killian Hayes, 10 assists for him tonight. So, yeah, you could obviously tell with that, you know, the offense was definitely um, flowing. And actually, let me go to the, the actual game stat. So, um, the field goal percentage tonight, 49% for the Houston Rockets, 46% for the Pistons. And then, obviously, the thing that's been killing us all season so far, 27% from the three-point line for the Detroit Pistons, 36% for the Houston Rockets. And that's been the thing that's been killing us. Um, excuse me, all season is that we haven't really gotten consistent um, shooting for our team. It's been better in recent games, but it's still been, you know, far behind. Well, not far behind, but behind other teams in the league. So that's an, um, that's been a big problem. You can look at the rebounding things tonight. Um, total rebounds, 47 for the Houston Rockets, 42 for the Detroit Pistons. Assists, 28 to 29. And that's basically everything. And it's kind of shocking to see that 20 turnovers for the Pistons, but the Rockets only had 19. I thought that it was more of a disparity between the two, but um, let me get back into the comments. Um, I would love a duo of Jaden Hardy and Kate. It would be amazing. You got to watch Jaden Hardy play to see his potential. Um, I feel you, but I would for, for me at least right now. My guy is um Chet. Killian has very little offense. Um, I, I could agree with that, but it's not really a thing that I'm upset about at this current moment in time because he's still so young right now and he can develop that um, in the future. So I can't agree that he his offense is limited and he's inconsistent on offense, but it's not something that I'm necessarily mad at him for right now. And it's something that he can develop in the future. I think Killian's wrist is bothering him. Yeah, and I think he took the brace off tonight. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and relook at the game, but I think he took the brace off of his hand and um, in these past few games. It's been really hurting him shooting wise because it's an injury on his shooting hand, his left hand. So um, that thumb injury has been holding him back definitely. Um, getting ten assists as an off guard is saying something. Yep. Um, since the Pistons are going to have a lot of salary cap for free agency, who do you like for the Pistons to pick up? Hmm, that's a good question. And actually, let me let me type that in on the screen. Top free agents. This all uh, season NBA. Um, <laughs> first thing I see is James Harden. No way we get him. Uh, let's see, James Harden. Get this ad off my screen. Obviously, we're not getting James Harden. Bradley Bill, Zach Levine, uh, DeAndre Ayton. He's gonna be an RFA, and I don't know if the um, what's it called, Phoenix Suns are gonna pay him. So it's going to be interesting with him. Oh, y'all, you guys can't even see my screen. What the heck? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> what's it called? But DeAndre Ayton, RFA, we don't know if the Phoenix Suns are going to pay him or not. But if he's going to be available, I would consider throwing a bag at him. Um, Kyrie Irving, no way. Um, Westbrook, Colin, Miles Bridges. This will be interesting, but there's no way the um, – What's the call? At this point, there's no way the Charlotte Hornets let him go with the way he's been playing with LaMelo Ball this season. Um, Nurkic, I like Nurkic as a player, but not really for the Pistons. 
Um, Valanchunas, he's had a really good season so far under New Orleans Pelicans, but again, not necessarily the type of player that I would want um, on this Pistons team. But at the same time, I wouldn't be opposed to getting someone like him. Uh, who else? Uh, TJ Warren, no. John Wall, no. Shooter, we like look at all these. Like, we don't need any more, no, no point guards, no shooting guards, not really small force either. We need more power force and centers, I would say. Those are my main targets. Um, that young fun fact about him I've been watching a lot of uh, what's it called, San Antonio Spurs YouTubers recently, and for some reason, they do not like that he is young and they want him off their team. So, um, he's gonna be available, but uh, with his age, I don't really think. He's someone we necessarily need on this roster right now. When it comes to getting another um, power forward, I want someone younger like Marvin Bagley, for example. And that was basically this everybody on this whole list, I guess. Um, let me see. Oops, I skipped. Did I skip over one? Oh no. Okay. I don't think Killian is fully healed. I mean, yeah, I, I think that everyone who's so far on this business thing, Kay Cunningham. I guess not him. He looks pretty, um, what's it called, healthy right now. But on this Pistons team, guys just look battered out there a little bit, if you know what I'm saying. Um, well, not battered, but is it fatigue would be the proper word I should use? Um, Jalen Green is returning in less than 10 days. I can't wait to see him, man. I know Evan Mobley, he just went out because he has to go through um, protocols. But it's going to be good to see Jalen Green again. Um. And let me pull up the uh, Jeremy Grant trade rumor so we can talk about that. Jeremy Grant. There we go. News. Um, Pistons with Trey Grant. Yeah, let's let's go to this. Um, the name of Jeremy Grant has come up with increasing frequency and in reported trade chatter during his second season with the Detroit Pistons. The rising belief that the Pistons are prepared to move Grant comes in spite of his status as a longtime Pistons favorite of Pistons GM Troy Weaver, writes Mark Stein. And actually, let me make sure that you guys can see this on the screen. Okay, you can. Um, let me see. Grant is currently out for a minimum of six weeks after undergoing a surgically, I mean, surgical procedure to repair the UCL ligament in his right thumb. The Pistons signed Grant to a three-year $60 million contract during the 2020 offseason. So that doesn't really give us a team. Um, I was expecting the teams to pop up that are interested in Jeremy Grant right now, but um, he is in talks right now. So why don't y'all trade for Sabonis? He can fit good with the Pistons' young core. Um, we don't want Sabonis on the Pistons. If anything, um, we will want from the Pacers team, Miles Turner. But the, the price for those guys to get them – it will be too high because the Rockets, I mean, not the Rockets, the Pacers, they're heading into a rebuild right now, which means they want young players. So um, someone like Jeremy Grant, he isn't someone who's valuable to them right now. <laughs> Excuse me. So if we hit up the Indiana Pacers and we want someone like Sabonis or if we want someone like Miles Turner, we have to throw Grant in the deal just to make the contracts match up. But the problem is they don't really run Grant because he isn't young and he doesn't benefit a team rebuilding right now. So. You know, Grant throwing him in a deal wouldn't really work for either Sabonis or Miles Turner. And then if they don't want him, the other guys that they would want on this roster, Sadiq Bay, Isaiah Stewart, Killian Hayes, you know, those guys are not someone who I would be interested in trading right now. So um, that's why, for the most part, there's no Sabonis or Miles Turner type of deal that I would be interested in. Now, if they wanted Jeremy Grant for someone like Frank Jackson, for example, and maybe like a second round pick, then maybe we could begin to talk. But that's probably not what they would want. They probably will want either Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bay, or Isaiah Stewart. And if they want those guys, then that's when I would say no, along with Jeremy Grant as well. So um, that's why the whole thing with the, either Sabonis or Miles Turner, that's why it's a no-go for the Pistons right now. And for um, Sabonis specifically, you know, this Pistons team, we need a center. We need someone who can be a live threat and protect the rim. And Turner, I mean, not Turner, and Sabonis, he isn't really that. He's an offensive, so offensive focus power four. And that's not something that the Pistons need right now. What we need on this team is defense. So um, to answer your question, why don't we trade for him? He doesn't really fit what we need right now. Um, don't know how Killian only has one person to file despite playing such physical D. Yeah, that's that's really interesting to see um, because we know his hands get active often and a lot. And he, he tries to steal the ball constantly. Um, let me pull the stats back up. 
Um, but yeah, he he constantly has active hands and he's always reaching in. So it is kind of surprising to see that his um, foul totals isn't always high. Um, let me leave it. Let's leave it here. Okay, what do you think are the reason why the Pistons can't get a win? I think the lack of consistent outside shooting and big men are the biggest um, reasons. Um, those are good reasons to start with, I would say, but um, you could throw in turnovers as well. The turnovers constantly kill this Pistons team, um, whether it's Kay Cunningham, whether it's Frank Jackson, like whoever has the ball in their hands. Typically, more times than not, they will turn it over when they're on this Pistons team, which is frustrating, so... I would say that outside shooting, that's been a problem. Not having a big man, um, what's it called? Uh, turnovers, injuries, those are the main things that's been killing the Pistons and why we can't really get a win right now. I mean, when Trey Lyles is your backup center, you know, how much, how much, can you, how much damage can you really do out there, you know? Um, what do you think of these Trey rumors of Jeremy Grant? Yeah, I just talked about it a little bit, but I guess I could talk a little bit more about it. Actually, I want to find the team specifically that were um, reportedly interested in him because I thought I saw the 76ers, but I don't know. Um, and Smith Jr., uh, let me see. Let's go to this one, I guess. Bleacher Report. Ah, uh, well, we, you know you can't really trust Bleacher Report, but let's let's see what they're talking about. Uh, hmm. Well, that's talking about Schroeder. Okay, but... Boston Celtics, oops, um, Boston Celtics guard Dennis Schroeder and Detroit Pistons for Jeremy Grant are the two players most likely to be traded before the February 10th NBA trade deadline, um, per report Mark Stein. According to Stein, rival teams increasing, increasingly view of Grant as a trade possibility because Detroit has lost 13 games in a row and is on pace to win just 12. Oh, my God. We are on pace to win 12 games. That's crazy. Um, Stein also says Schroeder is likely to be moved because the Celtics don't want to. Okay, that doesn't really involve the Pistons. But uh, let me see. Uh, that's talking more about Schroeder. And I don't want to get these highlights on this, um, the screen because might, that might mess me up. As for Grant, the Athletics, um, Shams, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, reported earlier this week that he is expected to be um, one of the most sought out after players um this winter and detroit is open to the to a possible deal um identified the lakers and portland trailblazers as teams interested in pursuing the veteran hmm, the lakers and the blazers okay let's let's pull up their rosters then la not lost la <laughs> lakers let's look at their roster who could we get from the lakers that we would be interested in so lebron no westbrook no anthony no Melo. So from looking at this list, the only guy that I would kind of be interested in would be Taylor Horton Tucker. But hmm, that wouldn't the money wouldn't match up if we had him. So I don't really know, man, with this with this Lakers team. Um and I don't think they want to give up. I mean, they may give up Melo. I don't know. But nah, nah, not the Lakers. Now let's look at the Blazers. Aim Dollar, no. Powell, Anthony, oops. Let me go back. Go back. Blazers. Okay, there they go. Um, Norman Powell, he would be interesting to add to this team. Anthony Simons, I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll give him up. He has a lot of potential. Um, not as little. Oh my gosh, I remember this dude, man. He was so hyped up a few years ago. People were talking about like he. It's kind of like um, the whole Stanley Johnson thing, like how Pistons fans thought he would be like a Kawhi Leonard type prototype. Um, and it's the same thing with someone like Nas Little. And it's been unfortunate to see him end up being like this. But we knew something like this could possibly happen because he fell um, so far in the draft. But um, I'm looking at this roster. I don't want anyone from the Blazers as well. So um, the Lakers, Blazers, as far as training for Grant, not really interested in those teams. I don't like Jalen, bro. Um, Grant getting injuries seems to be the best thing for Bay. I mean, I think that that's been the. I mean, it's. I know it sounds mean to say, but Grant being injured has kind of been a benefit for this Pistons team, and the fact that 
the offense has just felt more free without him being on the court. Not much isolation. Isolation, I mean, I'm um, going going out there without, excuse me, um, without Grant being on the floor. K Cunningham, it feels like he's been playing more free. He's been passing the ball more. And then, as you just mentioned, Sadiq Bay, it's looked like he's been benefiting as well without having um, Jeremy Grant out there. So, you know, I don't want to say that Grant has been the problem for the Pistons. And obviously, we're still losing basketball games. So it's not like we're playing better without him. But it does feel like the offense is being more free and it's flowing without Jeremy Grant. Actually, this is – let me let me pull up a guy that I've been wanting to – I've been looking at him this whole stream. This is a guy that we need on this Pistons team, man. I, I wish we had him back, bro. Charlie V. Charlie Villanueva. If we had this guy out there on the team – he will be helping us get all these wins, bro. I've been, I, I'm sorry. I just I just had to mention that. I've been looking at this bobblehead. He's been staring at me all this um this entire stream. I just had to put him on the screen. Um finally, Luca Garza got minutes. He did more than Trey Lyles in nine minutes than he did in 18. He should have been playing. Um, I can agree with you that I mean, like I would love for Garza to get more minutes and take away some minutes from Lyles, but it doesn't appear that Casey is going to do that because he's the type of coach who prefers to go with veterans over young guys. But um, something that I just thought about is that no Corey Joseph tonight. Um, let me pull that up, actually. Um, Pistons, blah, blah, blah. I should have had a whole bunch of tabs open so I didn't have to continuously retype these. But um, as you guys can see right there, zero minutes, zero, you know, everything for Corey Joseph. And um, Casey has completely cut him out of the rotation and decided to go with Saban Lee. So. I will give Casey props in that particular area. You know, not necessarily what he's doing right now with Luke Garza, but the fact that he's giving more minutes to Saban Lee, more opportunity to him, and cutting out, um, which is called, uh, cutting out Corey Joseph is is really good, man. Jalen Green hasn't been playing, and he is still one of the most hated rookies of all time. I mean, I'm a Jalen Green fan, but I can understand why people don't like him. And it's because of the way, well, not people, but Detroit Pistons fan in particular. You should understand why he um, is hated here. Um, the things that he said about our city and Detroit and the fact that he was talking about he wanted to be the first pick, but it appears that he didn't really want to get jacked about the Pistons. It was just, I, I, I completely understand why Pistons fan in particular hate him now. Me personally, I like Jalen Green because I've been following him for a long time, since his third year in high school. Um, Jalen Green, ever since he went to Prolific Pep as well, um, those teams and those games were really, really fun. I'm seeing him in high school. So, you know, Jalen Green, I understand why Pistons fans don't like him, but me personally, he's he's my guy, and I'm going to continue to support him. Um, Luca can deliver. Hayes is wired to be a playmaker, um, point guard. The offense runs better with him or K alongside Frank Jackson as a true shooting guard. Do you think Luca should work on his shot? Um, I mean, obviously, everybody on this team should continue to work and develop on their shooting. But um, Luca Garza, in particular, he was a good shooter in college. He's been shooting really well in G League, but on the NBA level, he's been inconsistent when it comes to shooting from three point land. And um, the mid I guess he hasn't really attempted really um, many mid range shots as well. So I would say that yes, he should continue to work on his sh um, shooting because of how effective he was in college. And I would love to see him add more of a mid-range game. F. Jalen Green. <laughs> uh, Rockets playing better since Green and KPJ out the lineup. Yeah, ever since um, Jalen Green has got injured, the Rockets have be began to play better. And that's not to say that um, because of – that's not to say that because of Green, it's not like – I'm not trying to say that Green is the problem or the issue, but it's a fact – not a fact, but – it's obvious that since he's been gone, the Rockets have begun to win more basketball games. So I'm not trying to hate on him. You guys know I love Jalen Green. But since he's been gone, you can obviously see that the Rockets have begun to play much, much better. I want Drummond back, man. I want him too, but it's it's not going to happen because I'm, I'm pretty sure he hates Pistons management. Killian is too passive. He needs to be way more aggressive. Um, I mean, I can agree with that, but that will come with time. What is he right now? 21 years old, 20 years old, something like that. He will develop that hopefully over time. How did Luca get hurt this time? <laughs> I'm loud. Um, thoughts from a Rockets fan? I mean, from a Houston fan? Killian got to stop being pass first in situations he can score. Yeah, I can agree with that, but I do believe that 
well, not believe. I hope that that will come with time and getting more confidence in the NBA. Dallas is lucky that they got Luka, and we lucky that we got Kay Cunningham. Absolutely, man. We got our superstar here in Detroit. Excuse me. Ah. Which channel was the game on? I couldn't watch the loss. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I watched the game on NBA League Pass. I got this. Um, it's it's a weird thing where like usually if you live in Detroit, most of the games are blocked out on League Pass, and you have to go to like Valley Sports Detroit or something like that. But for me, like the way I got my whole TV set up, um, I, I basically have a little hack, if you will, to where I can watch the games here in Detroit. Well, I don't live in Detroit, but I can watch the games um in Michigan, even though you're not supposed to. But I watch it on League Pass. Other people watch it on Valley Sports, Crack Streams, um, Buffett Streams. There's a whole bunch of places, um, a whole bunch of illegal streams where you can watch the games. Um, Pistons, um, you guys cannot see my face right now. <laughs> um, let me let me take my whole face off the screen. Detroit plays hard, and once shots starts, um, once shots start falling, the wins will come. K disappears throughout the game and had one of the quietest good stat lines I've ever seen. Um, Killian has a long way to go. Yeah, that's something that I'll actually, if I do a, a like a full game review, that's something that I will mention is that tonight it felt like Kay Cunningham, like he had a quiet 21. It's always weird when you hear people say that, but he really, really did have like a quiet 21 points tonight, you know. Um, Rockets nailed the draft and will be early in their success. Yeah, the Rockets definitely killed it in the draft. Let me put you guys stats back up on the screen. Um, getting, you know, Kenyon Martin, um, Josh Christopher, Buckets, um, even last year bringing in Tate. I mean, this Rockets team, Singoon, Jalen Green, obviously this Rockets team is on the up and up, and you guys have definitely began to play um, well in recent games. So you guys definitely have a, a pretty bright future. I just hope us as Pistons fans and this team, we can get to a level where you guys are at right now because, you know, the board, before the season started, I would say that the Pistons had a much brighter future than the Houston Rockets, but – with all of these injuries and guys having to be forced into more prominent roles, the Pistons have just been struggling, man. And, you know, our future, I still believe in this team. I still believe in our future. But it's looking more like the Houston Rockets and the Detroit Pistons are, like, on the same level right now, you know. And we've always been on the same level in terms of, you know, being in a rebuild. But I'm talking about, like, in terms of I thought the Pistons had more potential in the future. But that appears that it's not really um, the case right now. It feels like, if anything, the Rockets are on the same level of us, if not higher in terms of potential. Unfortunately, I think that um, I think any team that which want to trade for Grant doesn't have a whole lot um, we'd be interested in. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate, man. Because when it comes to trading someone like Grant, I will hope that we could get something you know more valuable in the future, um, like a, a potential type of player, like Marvin Bagley, for example. But you know, looking at those teams, Blazers, Lakers, I'm not really interested in anything that they could offer as Pistons, um, us as Pistons, as the Pistons. So, <laughs> lipstick Luca, how did he get hurt? Lipstick Luca, that's that's funny. I saw the uh, the memes already posted on Instagram. The Rockets ain't ish. Um, they're the walking mass of the West. Um, you you don't got to say that about them. They've been playing well recently and. As I just talked about, they have a really bright future, so it's, it's no need to hate on the Houston Rockets. They're a solid team. Um, the Rockets are better without Green. That's a hot take, my man. Uh, well, the Rockets ain't ish. Um, I wouldn't talk crap to any other team as a Pistons fan. Yeah, that is true. I mean, we can't really, outside of Kay Cunningham, we can't really argue with nobody right now. Um, Grant to GSW for Wiseman. Let's actually let's let's talk about the Warriors since you since you mentioned them, my man. Um, Warriors roster. Shout out to Curry for uh getting a record for three pointers, and Clay Thompson is apparently set to come back in January. So, but look, let's look at this. Um, what's it called? This Warriors team. Um, Grant for you said Wiseman. So isn't he injured right now? I think. Um. Yeah, he's injured right now. We gotta wait to see when he um comes back. But um, you can still trade injured players. It's just not really um, you don't really see injured players getting traded frequently. Uh, let's see. So Curry, you can't get him obviously. <laughs> um, Clay, 
I, I would love to get pulled, but there's no way they let him go. He's been killing it so far this season. So we can't get pulled. Would they be willing to give up Wiggins? And what I want Wiggins on this team. Um hmm, interesting. Andrew Wiggins. Uh I don't think they give him up right now. I mean, why would you got to think about it from the Warriors perspective, right? Perspective. Why would they want to shake up this roster when they've been playing so well so far this season? The only way that they, they will really want to shake it up is if they would have to give up basically a nothing player. Like, um, let me think. Wh which one of these guys would I consider like a nothing player? Um, be Elisa, right? Let's. Oh shoot! What the heck? I just. <laughs> sorry for blowing you guys' eardrums out, but um. Be Elisa, right? He's the type of player who I would consider a nothing player in terms of a trade type of deal. So them, the only type of player that I think that they will be willing to give up will be someone like Bielita or another, you know, Otto Porter, just some of these guys, right? They, they don't want to give up a – I don't think they're, they're interested in giving up Wiseman or Wiggins or Clay or Curry because of how well this, this Warriors team has been playing so far. So – the only way we could trade with them, I think, would be if we could get guys like Kevin Moody. Um, I mean, not Moody, Kevin Looney, um, Damon Lee. I think they would be willing to give up these guys. And maybe Moses Moody. I don't know. Um, like, I, I like him, but I don't think the Warriors, like, well, you got to think about it from their perspective. Why would they want to really shake up their roster right now when they're playing so well, you know? Paulo to the, um, to the Pistons. Yeah, I hope so, man. That's my number one guy right now. Um, hmm. Suns and Jazz finna take over. You should react to flight reacting to Pistons games. Um, no, I'm not interested in that at all. Listening to flight talk about basketball makes my head, my my brain cells delete. You know. Um. Hey, yo, what's up, Jerome um, Brown? No offense, but Houston hate us first. That is true. The Houston Rockets, um, they came after us. If you guys remember, um, actually, let's let's go to me. Let's let me, yeah, let's do this. Okay, YouTube, um, ba -da -ba. uh, Joe Polo Ten. Let's go to this right. Let's go to my most popular videos. Which one? This one right here, right? Street. Uh, let me make sure you guys can see this. Okay, you, okay, you can. Um, this was the video. Where I got a lot of hate. Obviously, you can't see the dislikes right now, but um, this was the video where Rockets fans they went after me and they started hating. Like, let's actually read through this. Um, let me think. Let me see. Cause it's a lot. It's two hundred comments here, so it's a lot to go through. Um, dang it! I wanted to get to the hate comments. Where are they? Cause I know I got a lot of hate comments on this video from Rockets fans. Uh, people from outside America all know five cities: L.A., Vegas, New York, Detroit. Detroit? Question? Joke? Hmm. You want to play for Detroit? Doesn't matter who it is. You want to play for Detroit? Um. Dang it! It's gonna take too long to get to these. Um. To the hate comments but yeah i remember on this video specifically i had a lot of rockets fans who came after me and came after the pistons and just leave they left a lot of um disrespectful me messages you know um james wiseman to motor city i don't think it's gonna happen actually and I, I i can't believe i forgot to mention this i actually read a report that said the warriors weren't interested in trading um what's his name james wiseman right now <clears throat> excuse a few days ago um, I saw that report, so I don't think it's going to happen. Ah, uh, excuse me. But I'm going to keep going through these comments because I want to see the uh, the hate, man. Really? Well, maybe I'm thinking about the wrong video. Um, I mean, let's be honest. Why the F would he want to play for Detroit? He simply because he wants to be the first pick doesn't mean he wants to be there. Hmm. This post was a joke. Maybe there was a reason he didn't play college ball in Detroit. You think Kevin Durant didn't um, try to get him to Texas? He wants to be the number one pick in the draft. That's his focus. Huh. 
former NBA player, coach in Houston. Griffin left. <laughs> Look at this. Griffin left Detroit. Heck, all your players ran just like Houston. In three years, ESPN will be asking for him to go to a big market team. None of this matters. <laughs> um, Kobe, like your analysis. But yeah, that's. I just wanted to uh, make the point to say that Rockets fans, they was definitely um, mad at me once it was draft time. Uh, guys, the Rockets have implemented an, an entirely new offensive system based on spacing that has caused a significant increase in all Rockets players. Jalen scored 11 um, points in 11 first quarter um, minutes before getting injured. Luka and Lee both still need consistent minutes every night. That's how you find and develop your rhythm against the actual NBA level competition. Yeah. Especially with, you know, Sam Lee. I'm happy that Casey is deciding to continue to go with him and bitching Corey Joseph and, you know, seeing the development of Sam Lee. You guys know I've been high on Sam Lee for a very long time. I'm actually, because some people believe I'm a hater of Sam Lee, which is just not true. And I guess as I pulled up my channel, um, Joe Polo 10, Saban Lee. Oops, Saban Lee. Because people think that I'm not like a Saban. Like, I've been supporting Saban for a very long time. Saban Lee shot me. This is basically a year ago, nine months. Um, Saban Lee's future role with the Pistons, exclamation point. The Pistons found a sleeper. Like, a lot of people think that I look ugly right there. What the heck? A lot of people be think that uh, I'm a hater of Saban Lee or something like that or whatever. Like, I've been a big supporter of Saban Lee for a very long time. And, man, just look at me, man. Look, look how far I've come. I mean, I'm still ugly right now, but what the heck, man? Look at that afro, bro. Oh, my God. But, um... Yeah, what's it called? I've been supporting Saban Lee for a very long time, as you guys can see here with this video. This is November 25th, 2020, so this was a full year ago, so let me like my own video. <laughs> uh, I've been supporting Lee for uh, a really long time, for the people out there who think I'm a Saban Lee hater or anything like that. No. Um, Killian plays like a baby, Trey him. Without Jalen Green, we don't beat the Bulls to start the seven-game winning streak. Oh, my bad. Bali. Um, oh, my Bali wasn't working. Oh, OK. I get what you're saying. But Bali Sports, it was working for um me, to wait, me today. I watched it on League Pass, but it's like League Pass basically is connected with Bali Sports Detroit. I think that's how the whole um, contract, TV contract deal works. I think. I don't know the particulars of that. Jalen will come back and be an entirely different player, but it's the rocket system and growth that will be the biggest cause. Hmm. Uh, Jalen is a either on fire or I'm going to shoot us into a loss type of player. That's why I wasn't high on him when he played for the Ignite. Yeah, I can agree with um, some of what you say. You know, Jalen Green, he is an inconsistent scorer, I would say. He has his nice rope. He'll randomly drop 30 like he did on, I believe it was Boston, I think was his 30-point his, um, game. If it was 30 points, I think. But, um, yeah, he's the type of player who will randomly drop 30 on some nights and then another night come out and have, like, seven points on inconsistent, you know, shooting um, percentages. So, you know, um, Jalen Green, I love him, but he's an inconsistent player right now. And I hope in the future, similar to someone like Killian Hayes, I hope that they can develop more consistency when it comes to the offensive end of the floor. Um, Let me see. Thanks, Joe, and love to the Pistons fans. Always, man, always. Detroit and the draft want team player, and Green is a selfish player, and K is a team player. I wouldn't say that Jalen Green is selfish because he's like he's willing to pass the ball on a few plays, but I can't agree when you're talking about, you know, when you compare the two, K Cunningham is obviously the more team oriented um type of guy. Um, not signing a true center was a bad move. Yeah. I wanted Nerlens Noel in the offseason and they didn't want to go after him. They wanted to go after Kelly Olenek, who's a offensive focus big. And, you know, that's why the Pistons are in the position that we're in right now. But I can't say that I didn't miss anything. It got to be in the plan to get a top five pick. And what if we do get the first pick again and get a backup big man to help beef stew? 
Do you mean like in a draft to get a backup big man? You said get a backup big man to help beat Stu. Are you talking about like with the top five um, pick getting a big? Is is that what you mean by that? Recomment because I'm kind of confused. Um, Pistons need some veteran leadership. Rockets luckily have guys like EG, DJ, um, Wood, uh, established vets. Yeah, that's that's something that I can definitely agree with that the Rockets have that the Pistons don't have right now. They have a good mixture of, you know, young vets. I mean, I say young vets, young players and veterans on the roster. That's that's a good balance that they have down there. Um, From Greece, much love to you, my man, from Greece. Pistons need center and a small forward. Um, I would say a center and a power forward um, with Grant being out. We have Grant and Kelly. Problem is them both being hurt, but they are quality players. Yeah, injuries this this whole season has really derailed the Pistons. Like, think about it. The first injury that happened was Kay Cunningham, right? He missed the first month of basketball. Then um, Kelly Olenek, he got injured after the first um, – He's I think he played 10 games, and then he got injured. And then Kelly and Hayes had that injury, and then Grant had that injury. So, you know, throughout this whole season, it's just been killing us, um, these, these injuries for our young Pistons and like I feel like if what's it called if we've had all our players from the very beginning of the season if K never got injured if Killian never got injured if Kelly Olinda like if everybody was healthy from the very beginning of the season I feel like our record would have been much different because right now what are we four and 23 let me let me pull that up actually what are we right now four and 24 okay we are four and 24 right now I feel like if we would have had our whole roster healthy this entire season our record could have been a little bit better, but the fact that we're missing everyone like Grant, Kelly, and Killian and Kay going out and in um, sometimes, it's just been killing us so far this season. I'll say ish next time. My apologies. Peace, everyone. Peace out, my mess. Also, our time is very soft. What do you mean? Our time is very soft. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> and fire Dwayne Casey. Let me actually, I wonder, I wonder if I type in Fire Dwayne Casey, what will it pop up? News. Dwayne Casey explains, hmm, thumb injury. So there's no reports out there talking about Fire Casey. So predicting next NBA. Hmm. This is interesting. December. So this is at the beginning of the month. And this is before the Pistons began to play really, really poorly. Um, where are the Pistons at? I'll start the Pistons in the thumbnail. Dwayne Casey, Detroit Pistons. If Dwayne Casey loses his job with the Detroit Pistons, at least it won't be as startling as the last time he found himself unemployed. Dang, that is one way to start off an article, man. Um, let me see. The Toronto Raptors fired him after a 2017-2018 season that earned Casey the NBA's Coach of the Year award. The Pistons are in rebuild mode, fielding a roster loaded with unproven youth and stopgap veterans. Losses um, should be the expectation, and if we're being honest, the intent, Detroit already landed Kay Cunningham with the number one overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft, and all indications... Um, this season are that it wants at least one more shot at a high lottery pick. Okay, is, is there anything interesting about Casey in particular? Um, contract 2024, blah, 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 the Pistons. Okay, so that's nothing. <laughs> They're just talking about this team in general, I guess. Um, I agree, Casey doesn't improve the young guys. With Grant and Olenek has two wings over six eight. Really? How many? Imagine how many guys on this roster. Like, what is the height of our players? Huh. That's 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 interesting. K Cunningham, he's six seven. Well, six six. She. Oh my god. Well, that's probably without shoes on. With shoes on, he's probably um six seven. Isaiah Stewart, he is six eight. Okay. Um, Grant, well, I, I pulled up Garza accidentally. Um, Garza 6'10". Bay, 6'8". Yeah, we, this team, we just have like a whole bunch of wings on this roster, man. 
we have nobody six five, like no no seven footers out there, no big bodies who can protect the rim, you know. And quickly, I wanted to say I appreciate everybody in the stream right now. We got fifty people um in here. Please like the stream. Um, I don't know how many likes I currently have on this, but if you um will be willing to, please like this live stream. K is excellent. Is an excellent player. Killian is minus one player on offense. Grant signed here for a black. Uh, Grant signed here for a black coach and black city. Um. Okay. It would not look good for Weaver to send Grant to a situation without that. Well, I don't really want to get into the whole um race thing. I'm not really interested in talking about that. We have trade Grant. I think you mean we have to trade Grant. I think that's what you meant to say. You said you were from Greece, I think. So you're you probably are on Google Translate or something like that. I don't know. Um Pistons have a stronger history than the Rockets hands down. I do respect the Rockets, though they had my favorite player, T Mac. My dad is actually um my dad, he doesn't really care about basketball, but it's kind of funny to see that, like, the one player that he knows in basketball, really, and the one player that he cared about was the Houston Rocket, and that was Hakeem Olajuwon, which is interesting. You know, he doesn't care about the Pistons at all. I, I would be willing to reckon he doesn't even know, like, Kate Cunningham or anything like that. But he darn sure knows about the Houston Rockets, and he knows about Hakeem Olajuwon. Pistons are not a well-coached team. Difficult to see the development of our young players. Killian is never ready to shoot when they swing the ball to him and he jumps to pass often. Detroit is very big team and organization. At the beginning of last season, Troy signed eight centers. Now we need now. I know it's crazy, right? Like we brought in Jalil Okafor. We traded for um what's that one dude's name? Tony Bradley. We had him on the roster. Like we had so many bigs, and now we don't have any at all. Like we have a log jam now at the point guard position with, you know, Saban Lee, Corey Joseph, Killian Hayes, Kay Cunningham. Like, we have so many point guards now, and we don't have any big. So it's like the complete opposite of last season. But even last season, it's like we had Derrick Rose, we had DeLon Wright, um, Killian Hayes. So we had point guards last season as well. We need more physical players. Yeah, and that's something that's like – it was like the difference between the Pistons and the Rockets last, um, tonight – is that the Rockets, they played more physical and more, like, they played with more strength and aggression, whereas the Pistons didn't really play with that um, much tonight. You know, Isaiah Stewart, he was really the guy who was playing physical, but outside of him, nobody really was playing in that particular way. So, um, K Fire. Also, I rem also I remain more from Sadiq. And huh? Also, I remain more from Sadiq and Stewart. I don't know what you mean by that, man. I don't know what you mean by that, but I appreciate the love and support again. You being from Greece, um, always I love seeing Pistons fans from around the globe. You know, those were heated time apologies from me for all Houston's fans. Yeah, during you know draft time, Houston fans they really went at me, man. They did not like the things I was saying, bro. When Pistons um fans turn up, bro, almost packed arena. We need that good. And game Pistons. I mean, once the Pistons start to win, that's when hopefully fans will start coming back in the arena. But, you know, as of right now, I don't think people are really interested in going to many games because of the simple fact that, what's it called, we keep losing. I mean, right now, what are we, 4-22? I mean, 4-24 um, at this current moment in time. Pistons fans, I mean, me, I would rather sit home and watch the game than go to a game in person. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean... Maybe one day I'll go to a game, but right now I don't really have interest in going there. You know, if they're going to continue to lose all these basketball games, you know, why would I do that when I could sit here, stay home, and watch the game on my 75 inch TV? You know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Actually, let me pull up some workout videos so you guys can have something to look at on the screen. Um, YouTube. By the way, I'm on my dad's account, so that's why all this weird stuff is <laughs> popping up. Like, who killed? But, like, I don't know anything about that. This is my dad's account, so. Um, Killian Hayes workout. Um, I said work, work out, you idiot, Joe. <laughs> um, 
is overtime Europe. Okay. So you guys can watch that while we um talk. Um Houston should not be talking about us. They had James Harden run away. Oh shoot. Y'all want to start the beef, man. K is a special player, but he is not um change player. I think you mean you're you're saying he's a special player, but he is not change player. Excellent team player. I, I think I get what you I think I get what you're trying to say. Um did you watch Spider-Man? Yes, actually. I watched Spider-Man. Um what is it called? No Way Home. I watched that yesterday. And if you want my opinion on it quickly, I would give it like a B. I think it's I saw some people saying it's like a top three Marvel movie or one of the best movies of all time. It's not that. It's it was good. I liked it. It had some really good moments that made me feel good. And it had some emotional moments, but Overall, I would give the movie a B. Um, we need more players with personality and strong mentality. Um, roster is very poor. Um, I understand, but we always get hate from everyone in state. The coaching staff has to be the worst in NBA history. Um, actually, let me let me pause these highlights real quick. Um, Pistons coaching. Can I get like a list of these guys? Um, Dwayne Casey is back, but not his assistants. Cause we brought in like a whole new coaching staff this year and we fired a whole bunch of guys. Um, get off my screen, you advertisement. No, that's not it. Um, ooh, excuse me. Here we go. Here we go. So the coaching staff for the Pistons, um, player development, John Beeline. Pistons Academy Coordinator, Brian Bolin, Director of Lifestyle Marketing. Yeah, I don't know who these guys are. And what happened to Coach DeBose? Isn't he, um, he's our, uh, what's it called, G League coach, isn't he? Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, none of these names are really ringing a bell. The only guy I really know is DeBose. He was the guy who coached our, um, What's it called? Our summer league team. But uh, yeah, you talking about, you know, our coaching staff is the problem. Those are the games. I, those are the guys. I mean, I guess that you could blame for our, you know, struggles, some of our struggles. But let's get back to this. Um, Killian gets so much hate still. Haven't seen him play 50 games yet. I know, man, I'm going to continue to support and defend Killian Hayes. But, you know, people, they can have their right to their own opinion, I guess, when it comes to criticizing him on an extremely high level i criticize him but you know i am more i'm looking at killian more from a positive perspective when i call him out and when i say that he's inconsistent in offense and saying that he has the potential to get better in the future you know i'm looking at it from more of a positive perspective whereas other people are saying he's inconsistent and that he's a bust and that we should trade him or send him to the g league you know that's the difference between me and some other Pistons fans, like I feel like half of the fan base hates Killian Hayes. They want him gone. They think he's a bust. They say bench him or send him to the G League. Or you have the other half, such as myself, who's being patient with him, at least that he can develop that um, more of an offensive game in the future. And, you know, looking at these highlights, like I wish he could do more of this in game, man. You know, it, everybody always looks good in practice. But when it comes to the games, you know, they never do things like this. Like, what is he about to do right now? A jelly layup. We'll never see him really do that in the game. But. Let me see. Dunk. Yeah, I knew that was coming. We'll never see Killian Hayes do this in a game, but hopefully in the future we can see him develop that. Also, we don't play defense. That's a good point. Um, I wouldn't say that we don't play defense, but tonight we gave up way too many points um, in the first quarter to the Houston Rockets. Um, what up, Dauphin? What's up, Mario Knows 313? I have an honest question. Who has more trade value, Wood or Grant? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, I got to get my H2O. Um, okay, who has more trade value, Grant or Wood? Um, I would say that they're in a similar category because they're both, like, I would say in terms of who's better, you can't really say because I, I feel like they're on the same level. But I would say it's probably Wood because he's a few years younger than Grant. Um, I think Wood is... What is he right now? 26? Let me pull up his age. Christian Wood. Um, what is he right now? 
he is 26. So, yeah, I was right. So, he's 26 years old. And Grant, Jeremy Grant, he is 27, I believe. Yep, he's 27 years old. So, they're they're similar, like one year apart. And I guess that would be the main – I actually, no. There's I, I, one year difference. You can't really add that in terms of, like, trade value. So, I would say that they're both equal when it comes to who has more trade value. There's not one guy who I would say is above the other. Um, and, and my dad, I could, I could literally see myself live streaming right now. Hello, me. Um, I only got 38 likes. I mean, 37 likes. Come on now. Come on, everybody in stream. Like the video, man. Like the video. Uh, but yeah, let me pull this back up. Ba da ba. Killian. Okay. Will by will by far. Come on now, um, Jock. Um, don't <laughs> I know you're a Rockets fan, but the gap between the two of those guys is not a wide one. It's it's definitely closer, closer if anything. Um, Jabari Smith Jr. Period. Um, Grant, you said Grant. He said Wood by far. I would say that between the two of those guys, they're they're really close, man. I can't really, you know, pick between the two who has you know more value. Killian is not a good player. Um, wait, Killian is not a good player. Um, he has potential and good body, but is very, very poor player. He doesn't use his abilities. Um, I really like Jabari Smith in the draft. I would trade Grant for Wood straight up, really. I feel like they're so similar, except the fact that Wood obviously is like uh like the, the positions are obviously different, you know. It was it was shame that we didn't renew Wood. I mean, we tried to, but Wood didn't want to come back to Detroit. So, um, you can't see my face now. <laughs> uh, actually, let me take my face off the screen. With how the team's constructed right now, K. Diallo, Bay, Garza, and Stewart should be starting. Killian Lee, um, Jackson, um, both of the Jacksons, and Lyles off the bench. I don't understand. The lineups at all. I mean, the lineups are all screwed up because of, you know, Grant not being here right now. And Casey, he's trying to find a way how to, you know, find a balance of having a good bench and a good starting lineup as well. And right now, he hasn't really found that because our bench mob, you know, without Diallo being on the bench, you know, usually, you know, having Diallo there off the bench, he comes in and he just adds, you know, energy. And he just gives us a push and a pump off the bench. But without him being there, you know, with Lyles being like our sixth man right now, it's it's kind of hard to get a lot of energy coming off our bench right now. So the lineups without, you know, Hamadou, I mean, not Hamadou. I mean, yeah, without Hamadou being off the bench and without having Grant right now, it's just, you know, Casey, he's going through it. He's having issues finding ways to, you know, adjust these lineups. Play was stopped at 5.40 in the second quarter of yesterday's game against the Charge. Luka caught an invert elbow by Taco Fall. Not sure about the lip unless it was the same play. Oh, you're answering the question um, how they kept talking about how did um, Luka Garza get injured. K is definitely a point guard. We shall see in the future, my man. Um... If K was a point guard, he would start at point guard. Pistons, Lions, I swear all of us who live in Detroit must have pissed off guy in a previous life. <laughs> you funny, bro. Um, let me see. Three on one. He's definitely capable. And Diallo definitely made Killian expendable, in my opinion. Um, no, I don't think the Diallo... If Diallo, if anything, like he makes Josh Jackson expendable, if anything, like I'm taking at this current moment in time, you know, I'm taking Josh Jackson. I mean, I'm taking him and Diallo over Josh Jackson. So I would say he he makes him more expendable, but not um, not Killian because they're they're different, you know, positions, really. Well, <laughs> it's funny that I say that, but tonight Killian was more of like a shooting guard. So but still m different positions for the most part. Um. Let me see. K, let, let me pull up a K workout for y'all. Of course, I get hit with a freaking advertisement. <laughs> Who the heck is this dude, man? Um, There y'all go. K Cunningham workout. Um, Go Pistons from Greece. Much love, my man, as always. Much love. I think you're about to leave the stream. Um, Oh, no, you didn't leave the stream. But much love to Greece, man. Much love. 
Um, Diallo is aggressive player. I think he deserves to play more. Yeah, he's been getting more minutes ever since um, Grant has went down. So, yeah, definitely, man. I love Diallo. Um, Joe Polo, you and the other Killian groupie fans are a disgrace to all true Pistons fans. People like you only like Killian because his hair is lit. And Okay, <laughs> okay bruh. You're a weird man. You're really weird, dude. Um, K, a point forward, clearly. Yep. That's the kind of category that you could put him in, a point forward. Like, he's a point guard and a small forward's body, you know? Um, Killian just playing can't shoot. Um, how do you feel about Trey Lyles? Um, Trey Lyles... I know a lot of people go after him um, quite frequently, but me personally, when it comes to Lyles, I'm not too upset with him because we're not paying him much. How much are we paying him right now? Like, I think it's $4 million. Let me pause this real quick. Um, Trey Lyles. Let me double check. $4 million, I think. Um, contract. Uh, okay, it's $5 million, not four. So we're only paying Trey Lyles, you know, $5 million right now. So I'm not really upset with the way that he plays. He comes in. He hits a few three pointers. He scores the ball inside. He may have his games where he turn over. He turns the ball over sometimes, or he just doesn't give us anything offensively or defensively. But for the most part, I'm not really upset with Trey Lyles because we're not paying him much. He's just a guy, you know, collecting a contract right now, being on this Pistons team. And whoa, I just okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Trey Lyles. I'm not really upset with him at all. Look at his numbers this season. He's averaging. Um, seven points, um, 31% from three, four rebounds, one assist, one, I mean, 0 0.3 still, 0 0.2 bots. You know, Trey Laws, I'm not really upset with him. He's just a guy I think a contract, you know. Let me pull up Kate again. Um, hmm. Today's just an example. Today's just another example. I'm um, showing we're short of muscle inside. Yep. Isaiah Stewart was our only big man out there, you know, battling with um, what's his name? Uh, Christian Wood. And apologies if I'm, you know, stuttering over my words or something like that. The reason why is because, number one, it's really hard to speak and talk consistently on live streams without stuttering. And then number two, another reason why is because I woke up late. I set my alarm for like 9 a.m. because I knew the Pistons had an early game, but. For some reason, I didn't wake up until like 1130 and then I had 30 minutes to prepare for the game. So that's why if you guys if you guys are having an issue with me struggling, um, sh stuttering, <laughs> that's why. But um, apologies for that. It's really, really hard, especially on live streams to, you know, speak consistently without stuttering. Um, Lyle's a bum. No defense, no rebounding. Um, too many pump fakes. I wouldn't say that he's a bum. He's just a, a whatever type NBA player. Just a guy collecting a contract, you know, I. I don't have too many issues with Lyles if we're only paying him $5 million per year, you know. Um, NBA trade machine, Grant for Wiseman, Kaminga, and Moody. Moody on a one-year Warriors lineup, Curry, Thompson, Wiggins, Grant, and Green. Like, I feel you. I understand that. But, like, why would the Warriors do that if right now, you know, they're, like, top of the league right now? Like, why would they want to shake up their lineup and their team if they're top of the league? Like, let me pull it up. Warriors... Wise man. Of course, I hit caps lock. I could have swore I saw a report that said they were not interested in trading him. Um, optimistic, because I know he's injured right now. But like, where's? See, look, this is it. This this is the report that I saw. It says why the Warriors are absolutely positive. It's not a report, but it was a guy talking about. The Warriors are absolutely positively are not trading James Wiseman. And I remember reading this. What the heck is this an ad? And I can't click off. I can't click off of it, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I read that um, article or report or whatever you want to call it that. I read that and it made a lot of sense to me. And I, I just don't think that they would be willing to trade him um, right now, especially with the current position of this team, of their team, I should say. Uh, YouTube ad, of course. Gotta wait for that to pass. Okay, there we go. And then actually, um, 
hold on, let me pause it. Uh, this guy right here, okay, this dude with the red short. Shouts out to him. If you guys don't know him, his name is Ashton um, Bennings. Um, he's um, Kay Cunningham's cousin. He's his personal trainer as well. Um, and I actually, I follow him on Instagram and I've had a few conversations with him and he's a really good dude. And he's been helping out the community here in Detroit. He's been um, training a lot of youth guys. So um, if anybody here in the chat have like young family members or whatever, or, you know, just if you know anybody young who wants to get better at basketball, you know, hit him up. His name is Ashton on Instagram. I think it's Ashton the trainer. Um, he's really interested in, you know, helping out Detroit and the community and, you know, supporting everybody in Michigan. So, you know, this guy right here, Ashton, go him up, hit him up on Instagram um, or, or Kay's brother as well, Cannon um, Cunningham. Go hit those guys up. They're really interested in, you know, helping out the community and supporting Michigan and Detroit. Um, Let me see. Hey, man. Um, what do you think about Garza getting more minutes? I already talked about that. Yep. I already talked about that. Um. Why look a face look like he's been battling and he only got 10 minutes left all out? He looks like a guy who's been freaking fighting in Vinland Saga. If anybody watches anime and if you watch Vinland Saga, you know exactly what I'm talking about, man. Or heck, not Vinland Saga, Berserk. He looked like he's been fighting in Berserk. If any, if I got any anime fans watching right now. Um, I am scared... Uh, yeah, my face right there would be better. I'm scared because Kate probably won't stay because other teams will give him a lot of money to take him away. Um, well, when it comes to you talking about Kate Cunningham possibly leaving in the future, when it comes to guys like Kate Cunningham who have like superstar level potential, and you know if Kay, if he truly does develop into that, every team in the NBA is gonna want him, and it's not just Kate. You know, Luka Luka Doncic as well with the Mavericks. They have that same problem that they have to worry about Giannis and the Bucks. Like, remember a few years ago, the rumors were like, oh, what if Giannis leaves the Bucks and goes to the Miami Heat? You know what I'm saying? Like, it always happens with superstar type players. There will always be rumors and, you know, reports out there saying that they're possibly going to other teams. So eventually, once K develops into being a superstar, we're going to see those reports. And, you know, we're just going to have to fight those off and, you know, hope that he would stay here in Michigan, hope that he would stay here in Detroit. And I believe that he will. It appears that, you know, he seems like the type of guy who's down to earth, loyal to the soil. Um, I don't know him personally, obviously, but he just seems like one of those type of guys who will be here for the long haul. So, um, Kay Cunningham, I don't see, like, I don't have any concerns really with him wanting to leave the Pistons anytime soon. Um, Got to root for young guys. They play harder when they know the whole city is behind them. Put yourself in their shoes for once and support them. Yep. I completely agree with you, man. Got to continue to, you know, I know we're losing a lot of basketball games right now, but I just continue to support this team, continue to support, you know, Saban Lee, uh, Killian Hayes. Like, I, I just continue to, you know, put the positive message out there for these guys. We need a seven-footer with him, with some athleticism. Yeah, definitely, man. That's why I've been doing some, you know, recent videos on possible, you know, big men targets like – um What's the name? Bowl Bowl, for example, or Jalen Duran in the draft. Like I've been, you know, looking around for some other big man options to, you know, help out this team next year. Oh, excuse me. We should have got JaVel McGee. I've been saying that all summer. Damn, man. I ate bacon earlier and this killing my digestive system, I guess. Um, but uh yeah, JaVel McGee, he would have been another interesting target to go after. I know some people wanted um Javel, I mean not Javel. Um, Dwight Howard as well. Um, people wanted the Pistons to go after him. So, um, yeah, but the Pistons, they decided to go with, uh, what's this guy? Um, Kelly Olenek. So, K loves Detroit too. Thank goodness, didn't drive Jalen. Um, this dude close to 30 every time. He's in the G League. Last time he played before Rockets, he had seven in less than a minute and had nine in nine minutes last night. He... A rookie, he's got time. <laughs> Keep tanking Detroit. Absolutely, man. Chet, you know, um, Paolo, Jalen, one of these top guys in the draft, Jabari, whoever it is, you know, tank for Paolo, man. Tank for Chet, whatever it is. Keep the tank on Pistons. Um, Garza is going to have a place in this league. Javel will help us so much. Yeah, Garza definitely, um, whether it's on the Pistons or another team, I do believe that Luca Garza is the type of guy who 
you know, in the future could be a backup center to a, a, a center. Um, he could be a backup center to a starting caliber center in this league in the future. That's what I see for Garza. Um, if we kept Wood, we couldn't – we wouldn't have K, so chill. I mean, yeah, if we would have kept him or Drummond or, you know, if we would have made one move to stay in mediocrity like the Pistons were in a few years ago, this team would be completely different, obviously. Um, Tank for Paolo. Yep, Tank for Paolo, man. Just a matter of time to be the best team in our conference. Um, I mean, I hope we can get to that level one day. Our fans got to understand this is a development and tank year for us. Fans don't like the coaches, but despite who they play, we'll lose because the roster is not built for winning yet. Yeah, uh, like I understand people's frustration with this team, but like, I don't understand people who are so upset with us losing all of these games. Like, I understand that it's bad that we're projected to only win 12 games so far this season. Like, that is bad. I understand it. But, you know, with this team right now, when you look at the roster, I just, for me personally, personally at least, I, I can't get upset with this team, man. I, I just can't. Trey Grant for Miles Turner. Bay is ready to step up. I mean, if we're talking about a deal straight up, Grant for Miles Turner. Yes, I will make that deal. I'm sure most of you in the chat and Pistons fans, we will be willing to make that deal. But the problem is with the Indiana Pacers, do they want Grant? Do they want a straight up deal? Miles Turner for Jeremy Grant? No, they don't want him because they're heading into a rebuild as well. So, you know, you got to think about their team, their perspective as well, their future. They don't want Grant. So, you know, as much as I would love that type of deal, it's not going to happen because the Indiana, the Indiana Pacers are heading into a rebuild. How many games do you think the Pistons are winning? I don't know, man. I mean, as I said a few seconds ago, the Pistons are currently projected to only win 12 games this season. So we're going to see, man. We're going to see where we end up losing. I mean, we end up um, finishing out. Um, you good, bro. Appreciate. Um, you good, bro. We appreciate your work, man. I appreciate that. Boaster, um, Boaster child, Boaster for child. I really appreciate that, man. And everybody in the chat, again, like the live stream. Um, we are hour and 16 minutes into this stream, so I appreciate everybody in here who's continuing to, you know, show support to me, even though the Pistons are going through all of these struggles and issues right now. You're still coming to my channel and, you know, showing love. So please like the stream and uh, let's continue to talk about the Pistons. Um, how soon will Livers see significant action, if at all? Um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because Isaiah Livers actually, as of today or last night, he got sent back down to the um what's it called our G League team uh Zaya Livers. I probably spelled his name wrong. I know I didn't. Um news, news, news. I think he got sent back down yesterday. Um where's it at? Where's it at? No, it's not popping up. Motor City Cruise. Pop up here. Motor City Cruise. Maybe it'll pop on the schedule. Um, right here. No, not trying to play that. Where is it at, man? Um, game info. I don't know why the highlights keep popping up, man. I'm trying to find the uh, the bot score for this game and then go to his name specifically. Players, there we go. Um. Dang it, I clicked Jalen. Freak. Box score. Uh, you know, screw this, man. I don't even know what I'm – what, what am I doing this for, man? Freak that. But uh, to answer your question, what's it called? Listen, I think right now Isaiah Livers, he's on the Motor City Cruise roster. That really irritated me so much, man. Um, Let's get these highlights pulled back up. I mean, not highlights, workout, clips, video. Actually, let's let's go to Kay's highlights. I mean, his high school highlights instead. Oops. One thing. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Ah, come on. High school highlights. There we go. There y'all go. 
Um, y'all need to wait. Did I skip one? Okay, no, I didn't. Um, y'all need to go look at Trey Lau's stats. He not that bad. Joe, look it up for because they most not watching the games. I didn't say he's bad. I said Trey Lau's is a average, you know, jobber type of player. We're, we're paying him five million dollars per year. I don't got too much issues with him. Um, he's not a bad player. He's not a good player. He's just he's Trey Lau's. I appreciate that, Clement Tangle. Thank you, man. Um, what about Bo Bo? We was not talking about him. Uh, we need DeAndre Ayton. I talked about him a little bit earlier in the stream. Also, we trying to build a dynasty. Yeah, this 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 business team, this rebuild right now. Let me get that ad off the screen. Um, right now we're building for success in the future, development. You know, for the future. It's not about winning right now or you know having success right now. It's it's all about the future, man. You know, Troy Weaver, I think he said it's going to be a five-year plan for this Pistons team. So, let me see. Um, nah, Joe, don't believe that. We support you talk. Real talk. We don't support you talking like Killian is going to improve when you can't know he can't shoot the rock. Okay. Um, Livers played last game. Yeah, but I think he got sent back down to the uh, to the G League. I haven't got a chance to watch the Motor City Cruise game, um, yesterday's game yet. Um, I'm going to have to watch that after this live stream and probably do a video on that tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I think he got sent back down yesterday. Um, I was in Indy and saw Livers. I saw how he moved on the court. Oh, so you were at the – um, what, was it a G League game that you saw live in person? I mean, not the G League game. Um, so you were at the Pacers game live in person. That's interesting. Good for you, man. I hope you took um, pictures. And um, actually, if you got any, like, really cool videos or clips of players send them to me on Instagram so I can include those in my videos. Um, we as a fan base got to ride with these young guys when tough um, times are tough, not turn on them. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's really, really tough to see like some of the fan base, you know, especially when it comes to someone like Killian Hayes, how hard they've turned on him because of his struggles. You know, it's, it's really, really tough to see that. Lyle's 3.5 mil. Trey Lyle should never be the big man on any court at any time. Yeah, I completely agree there. Like, as I said, he's not a bad player. He's not a good player. Trey Lyle is just in the middle. He's just average. But um, I can definitely agree that he should not be the center on any team at any point in time. So I definitely can agree there. But the problem with that is because, I mean, the reason why he's there is because we don't have Kelly Olenek right now to, you know, play that position. So we're forced to put um, Trey Lyle's there right now. Excuse me. Maybe we should go after Jericho Sims. He's not playing much behind Robinson and Noel on the Knicks. Honestly, bro, I love the Knicks. They're big men so much. Like, honestly, I would take any one of those to be completely honest with you guys. Like Mitchell Robinson, Nervous Noel, I mean, they probably wouldn't give them up. But I would definitely take any one of those those bigs off the New York Knicks, man. Um, Let me see. Other than shooting, what's wrong with Killian? Um, I guess you're asking somebody else because I'm a Killian supporter, man. Um, you know, I let me go back here because Killian, you know, he has the rebounding, he has the passing. I think he had what 10 assists tonight. Um, he has the defense, he basically has everything except consistent offensive scoring. So the Lakers had the fast rebuild in NBA history. Well, it's kind of different because the Lakers, like, they dropped Alonzo, they had Julius Randle, they had Brandon Ingram, like, they had a whole bunch of young guys. And then just straight up traded them for Anthony Davis. So it would be like the Pistons if we had Sadiq Bay, if we had um, Killian Hayes, Isaiah Stewart. Like if we took all of our young guys and traded them for someone like, I don't know, who's a young hot player right now who would be? It would be like, well, I can't think of a guy, but, you know, the Lakers, they basically took all of their young players and traded them for Anthony Davis. So the Pistons, if we were to do that, if we were to get in a similar situation like the Lakers, we would basically have to go up the entire young core to be in the position that they're in right now, which is not something that I would want to do because, you know, I, I much prefer us to go through this rebuild and struggle through this rather than, you know, rushing this rebuild and trading for someone like an Anthony Davis type. I will stay loyal to the team and players, not forced to. We choose to guards. Uh, damn, I miss Christian Will, but I'm going to end the stream right now. We've been going on for an hour and 25 minutes. I appreciate everybody who came in and, um, said what's up to me please make sure you guys like this stream before you leave out of here 
Um, I much love to, and support to all of y'all, man. Um, everyone who leaves, you know, comments and likes on my videos. Um, you guys are really giving me a job here. Um, this is my full time, well, not full time technically, but um, it's like a part time slash full time job. Um, it's a career path that I've chosen, and you guys are really, really supporting me on this journey so far. So. I really appreciate all of y'all, you know, showing all the love and I will see you guys in my next video whenever that will be out. Um, it's probably going to be a video on Chet Holgren. It's probably going to be that video or it may be on it may be on Sadiq Bay. I don't know. It's, it's either going to be Sadiq Bay or Chet, one of those videos. But you guys should be seeing that really, really soon. And that's basically everything, man. So much love and support to y'all as always and continue to, you know, support the Pistons. So.